Welcome back to quarter three of the Cincy Junior Sabbath School show. Let us close our eyes and pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for bringing us together today. Please guide us as we go through both PowerPoint and Cornerstone so we may learn lessons out of it and as well as the viewers to learn lessons that are valuable in their daily lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. I will now have the hosts introduce themselves. My name is Michelle Forjour. I'll be doing PowerPoint. And my name is Happiness Sopoku, and I'll be doing Cornerstone. I will now have the guests introduce themselves. I'm Jared, and I'll be participating in the Cornerstone discussion today. I'm Renu Ola, and I'll be participating in the PowerPoint discussion. As the cases of coronavirus continue to rise across the state and nation, the stay-at-home order was signed and implemented. We have not faced such an epidemic like this in about 102 years. The last time there was such an epidemic was during the year 1918, when there was an influenza epidemic. Surely we're at war, and in war we tend to make sacrifices in the battle. Right now, at a critical point in the struggle, we are at a moment of enormous urgency. One thing we can do to slow or stop the propagation of this epidemic is to consider social distancing, avoid large groups, and to sit at home. That is why, for the coming months while we practice social distancing, we will also be attempting to create videos of Sabbath School discussions from home. The standard of our video material will not be good because we would be doing an online discussion rather than a studio recording. But we promise you that there will be improvements in how we make this kind of content. We hope you watch and enjoy this form of discussion while we all practice social distancing. If you don't have the PowerPoint book, you can go find it online at www.juniorpowerpoints.org. And if you don't have the Cornerstone book, you can find it online at www.cyberschoolpersonalministries.org or Cornerstone Connection. The Bible verse of this week is found from Romans 6, verse 23, and it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you haven't already, please check out our new Instagram account for the youth. The name of, of the account is Cincy underscore GSDA. The spelling is C-I-N-C-Y underscore GSDA. We will now start off with PowerPoint. This week we are on lesson one, and the title is Lucifer's War. The power text is found from Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 and 7. I'll be reading from the King James Version, and it says, And the Lord passes by before him and proclaimed the Lord the Lord, God merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin that will not, will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children onto the third and to the fourth generation. Amen. I'll now have Emanuela give us the summary. This week's lesson is about how um, Lucifer didn't want to listen to the Lord's laws. He said that they were too strict and they were unfair and how even though he was the highest ranking angel, how he wanted to have more power. So um, the angel Michael was trying to talk to the other angels who were rebelling against God, saying that um, how God's laws aren't very strict. He just wants obedience and love. And the angels didn't want to listen. So God gave Lucifer many opportunities to repent and give and stay in heaven with God, but instead he wanted still wanted more power and was greedy to have more power and not listen to the laws of God. So instead, um, God stood at his gate, heaven's gate, and led Lucifer and the angels who rebelled out. So because God didn't want others to also follow in Lucifer's rebellion, he sent his son onto the earth to die on the cross for us so that we'll be able to receive salvation and eternal life. And that's where the story ends. Thank you for your summary. Now on to the questions. So Emanuela, who was Lucifer to God? Lucifer was one of the highest ranking angels. If you look in the Bible, um, he also had a beautiful voice and he's one of the, like, the most beautiful angels in heaven. What was Lucifer's first false claim, and why did he? Why do you think he felt that way? Um, his first false claim was that God's laws were unfair. He felt that way because he was he thought that he should be a part of the important decisions that were being made, 
but since, since he wasn't a part of them, he thought that the laws are unfair and wanted more power, so he decided to rebel. So what were the consequences of rebellion against God's law of love? Um, the consequences against God's law of love was for him to um, leave heaven, heaven. Even though God had given him many opportunities to repent and you know, give up his rebellion, he still decided to follow through with what he thought. So he still had, he had to leave heaven. Is that how you would describe hell? Hell is um, a place where uh, you go because you decide to not follow God's laws, even though God's laws are obedience and love. So yes, I would describe hell as in the story, it says, the father was gracious and willing to forgive them. God loved them in spite of what they had said and done. All they had to do was repent. If you were in God's place, would you have forgiven them that easily? And would you still have loved them? Honestly, um, after giving you many opportunities to forgive, I would not. Um, after giving you many opportunities to, like, come back and not rebel. I wouldn't be able to forgive. But that's how you know God isn't just like any normal human because us humans, even when somebody does something wrong against us, we'll hold a grudge for a very long time before we actually decide to forgive them. But when we sin against God, no matter how many times we sin against him, as long as we realize what we did is wrong and we decide to repent and come back to God, he accepts us with open arms. I also agree with you. I feel like that it would be hard for me to forgive them after all the chances that you have given them. And like you said, it shows that God is a very forgiving person and that you can do the worst thing and God will still forgive you for it. So do you understand where Lucifer is coming from? I do understand his point about the fact that um, he thought it was unfair that since... He was one of the highest ranking angels. He should also be a part of the decision making. But I think it was unvalid and unnecessary for him to think that he should have even more power than God himself. So the fact that he rebelled and did all of that and took angels with him into his rebellion, I think was unvalid and unnecessary when he could have just repented because he already had enough power. And have you ever felt what Lucifer felt? Um, when evil takes over you, yes, you do feel the way that uh, Lucifer felt when he was unable to get the power that uh, he wanted. But that's what evil is. It takes over you. And especially in this world where there's a bunch of evil, it is very easy for a person who doesn't have a strong relationship with God to easily turn to evil instead of following God's path. I feel like I agree with you. I also feel like jealousy is something that Lucifer felt, and many people feel jealousy at some point in time in their lives. I've also felt that too. So what lesson or lessons can you get from this passage? Um, what I've learned from this passage is that we have a very forgiving God. Um, he gave Lucifer many opportunities to turn back and not follow through with his rebellion. And it shows me that um, even though I may sin against God, God still has love for me. And the fact that he was able to send his only son onto the earth to die for me because he didn't want me to follow through with Lucifer's rebellion shows me how much he truly loves us. That's good. Another lesson that I got from this was the way you respond to your emotion. It, if it's a good way, then you will probably go to heaven. And if you respond how Lucifer responded, you probably won't make it to heaven because you didn't follow God's law. So thank you for your responses, Emanuela. Now, this week's question of the lesson is, how did God first appear to Moses? Type your answers in the comments below. Okay, so we're also on Cornerstone, and this week we're on lesson one, and the title is, Who Me? The key text is found from Jeremiah. In 1 verse 5 and it says before I formed you in the womb I knew you before you were born I set you apart 
I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Amen. Jared, can you please give us a summary? Uh, this week's lesson focuses around the prophet Jeremiah. This week's lesson begins with the prophet Jeremiah quoting the words from the Lord that were said to him, um, including him saying that God knew him before he was in the womb and appointed him to be a prophet to the nations. Uh, the prophet Jeremiah had a conversation with God and Jeremiah was telling God, on how he was too young to be a prophet and how he couldn't speak. And God replied to Jeremiah saying that he shouldn't be afraid because he would be with him and would rescue him. Uh, after saying this, the Lord gives Jeremiah three signs. And the first sign was the Lord touching Jeremiah's mouth. And that symbolized the Lord giving Jeremiah the words that he would need to speak to who he was going to be sent to. The second sign was the branch of an almond tree, and that represented God waiting for his word to be fulfilled. And the third sign was a pot that was tilting to the north, and that represented the northern kingdoms coming to the place and land of Jerusalem, and how the people there would forsake God and burn incense and worship the things that they made with their hands. And the lesson ends with God telling Jeremiah that he's supposed to go wherever he commands Jeremiah to go to, and that the people of the land will come against him, but he shouldn't be afraid, um, as he reminds Jeremiah again that he would be with him and would rescue him, ending this week's lesson. Thank you, Jerry, for your summary. Now on to the questions. So the first story to talk about is, why did God choose Jeremiah to become a prophet? Uh, I think God chose Jeremiah to be a prophet simply because that was God's will for him. Uh, God placed the abilities um, that were necessary for Jeremiah to become a prophet. What did God instruct Jeremiah to do? Uh, God had told Jeremiah that um, he was to go to wherever and whoever uh, God had told him to go to and do what he commanded, which included going to Jerusalem and warning the northern kingdoms and the kings that were in Jerusalem and the people there to turn away from what they were doing, which wasn't good, and to turn back to God. So God already had plans for Jeremiah before he was born. So what does that show about God's plan for our life? Um, it shows that God has a plan for the person watching this and for everyone that's on earth right now and who will be on earth later on. Uh, God's plan for our lives is great and it's even better if we're willing to partake in it. Uh, there will be some times of uncertainty, um, hard times and difficulties, but we can rest assured knowing that we're able to conquer them and be able to, in the long term, enjoy the plan that God has for each one of us. Do you believe God has a purpose in your life? Um, yes, I do. Uh, specifically, I don't know exactly uh, what I'll become, but I do know that I want to make people happy and help them live the lives that they deserve to have. What warnings does God give? What warnings does God give Jeremiah? Uh, the warnings were towards the northern kings that were coming to Jerusalem and for the people that were there to um, turn away from their wicked ways. Lastly, what can we learn from the story? Um, we learned two lessons from this week's story. The first lesson is that we should build our courage and confidence through the help of God so we're able to do his will. And then the second lesson is that we shouldn't place other things before God. We shouldn't worship other idols. Um, we should put our attention and um, our love and honor towards God um, more than we do to other things. Thank you for your response. Now, let's take some close it off. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for making both lessons successful for both PowerPoint and Cornerstone. For whoever is watching, please help them be able to take valuable life lessons out of this and apply it to their daily lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 
The question of the lesson, again, is how did God first appear to Moses? Thank you all for tuning in to lesson one. I hope to see you guys continue to share these videos with other people, with people that haven't seen it, or with your fellow family or church members, and comment down below your answers to the question of the lesson that I said above. Hope to see you all next week.